Hi friends, my name is Al or at Lil Star Nerd on Instagram and welcome to today's episode of a highly requested video. Just kidding, obviously. <laughs> Today I'm gonna to show you all my favorite art supplies. These are my go-tos, the things that I kind of keep buying more than once, um, cheap, convenient options, and then my genuine like favorites that just perform really well that I really like. Um, you guys tend to ask about this stuff. Not gonna lie, I get annoyed having to answer it on every separate Instagram and every separate YouTube post. Um, and I think it'd be nice to just have it all in one place, one easy resource for you guys, and hopefully it's helpful, so. Really quick before we start, I want to thank Flexispot for sending me this amazing desk. This is their Kamhar all-in-one standing desk and I am genuinely so impressed with it. Not only is it just low-key, like really pretty, like this is a very visually pleasing desk, but it also works really well. It has a max height of about 48 inches and a minimum of about 28 inches, so you have a really nice range to work with. The keypad is really easy to use with four preset options and USB ports, which is so nice. It's also like surprisingly quiet when adjusting, so that's fun. I'm so excited to have a standing desk because to be honest, sitting for hours gets boring sometimes. As an artist, I spend a lot of time just sitting, but for things like answering emails and packaging orders, a standing desk is perfect. And Flexispot's desk is a great choice with its durability and quality. You can use my link down below to get $10 off your order. So I've organized this in a way that makes sense to me and is hopefully like worthwhile and like helpful and makes sense to you. Um, it's kind of like from sketching like basics all the way to like painting. Hopefully that's, it matters, I don't know. Um, we're gonna start with the thing that I get asked about most often, which is my sketchbook. People always wanna know what sketchbook I'm using. It is Strathmore, I've used, I've used a bunch of different sketchbooks over time, but like Strathmore Mixed Media is the one that I've been working in lately, and it's the, this is the third time that I've bought it. I really, really like it. I think I bought this because of Leah Lexin. I'm pretty sure she's the only person I can think of that like talks about this sketchbook. Um, but I really like it. Like I said, third time buying it. It has 64 pages, which to me is like a really good amount. It usually takes me about three quarters of a year to get through it, which is like not too long that I'm dying and I'm like bored of it, but it's also long enough that I feel like it's worthwhile and that I've been in it more than, you know what I mean? Like I like to be in a sketchbook long enough that it feels like it matters. That does not make sense. Um, I like to be in it for longer than like a few weeks. Um, I also think it's it's great quality, especially for the price. Um, there, I've tried other sketchbooks that are really expensive that just did not need to be that expensive, weren't like the best quality. This is really good quality, and I think it's definitely like a affordable. I don't know if it's the cheapest, but it's definitely affordable in my opinion. This is the size seven and three quarters inches by nine and three quarters inches. It's mixed media paper. Um, it handles every medium that I've ever used really well. It's pretty white, which I like. Um, Handles wet media really well. There is some bleed through with marker, but like I haven't had a sketchbook that that doesn't happen in. And I think it's it's pretty manageable for like how bad it could be. Um, the paper is <laughs> it's pretty sturdy. It's um, not too thick, but it's like thick enough. I really like it. It doesn't warp that bad with like watercolor or gouache. I really like it. I'm probably gonna continue using this sketchbook for the foreseeable future. I really like it. Also, it's a series, 500 series. I don't know if that matters. Um, I really like it. I also like that it is hard, like hardbound like this. I don't like spirals. Um, and it lays pretty fat, like flat when you get to the middle section, which is also really nice. So if you're looking for a sketchbook recommendation, I definitely recommend this one. Okay. This I also get asked about quite a bit. Um, and that is like, what kind of, what is my red pencil? Because I, people see it a lot. Um, and that is my Ticonderoga red erasable checking pencils. They're grading pencils. And that's what I like looked up to find these pencils. They're really cheap. Um, I know that a lot of people use like the cold erase red erasable pencils. I don't know how much those are, but these like for this 12 pack, I think it was like 99 cents. Like you can get them at Walmart for like 99 cents. Um, they're super cheap, super convenient. Um, I've never even tried any other sketching pencil. I've had these for four years. I just keep rebuying these because like I go through them really fast and this is super cheap and they work well enough that I've never needed to like try something else, even if it's better because these, like I said, work well enough. Um, and in my opinion, if there's a cheaper version that does the job, you don't like need the better version just cause it's better. 
You don't need professional supplies to be a professional artist. You don't. As long as it's good enough that people are paying like a fair price, you don't you don't need like nice products. And I, I find it really frustrating to see a lot of people like buying like really expensive fancy things that do like when this is like this does the same thing is what I'm saying. So don't feel like I use a lot of cheap stuff because it works well enough and I'm not gonna spend money that I don't need to. So if you're looking for cheap versions of things, don't feel bad about that is what I'm saying, which is really random, but I just feel like that's important to talk about. Um, so I use these pencils. They don't erase the best, but like it's, they also don't go down, like they only ever get so um, dark, like they stay pretty light, which is perfect. So like I said, they do the job. I don't really do like just pen like sketches with these so how they perform also isn't that big of a deal for me they work great i really like them they work great for like the price um they're really convenient so if you're looking for a cheap erasable like colored pencil to use for sketches buy these another really cheap option for things i don't work in pencil that often so i don't really care about whether or not i have good pencils the like hb hb like you know pencils <laughs> h HB and B pencils that I have like they're really cheap like they're like the really like cheap kind that you get in like You know those big plastic boxes for like toddlers of like all the different art supplies like they're that kind of pencils Like they're not they're like really cheap stocking stuffer kind of pencils um, And so I, I don't really use them that often not because they're bad, but because like I don't do pencil so when I do I literally use these Bic mechanical pencils that I've used forever. I really like them because they're cheap. You get a 12 pack for like what, like $2.99? Um, they work fine. They work well. They erase really nice. They're comfortable to hold. Cheap to replace. I like them. Tortillon. Tortillon, okay. I think these are tortillons. I call them tortillas. Um, I don't really use them that often, like, when I do do sketches, um, I don't like to use Q-tips, I don't like to use my finger, I don't like the way paper feels, so I don't like to touch it that often, and I used to use a paintbrush, but it was just too hard to clean, and I also kept confusing, like, which one I was using for graphite, and then I just had, like, five unusable paintbrushes that were covered in graphite, so I now use these, um, I don't know what brand these are, these are probably just, like, my dad's old ones, um, but they work really well, so if you want to know what kind of blending technique I use for graphite? It's this. For sharpener, I just use the Prismacolor sharpener. Um, again, really cheap. I think it's only like two-ish dollars. I was gonna try the metal ones because I think they're like kind of trendy right now, like just the tiny little metal ones, but it was really expensive. Um, and this is honestly really good for how cheap it is. I had this, I like had this one before. I think it came with like my Prismacolors that I got and I had it for four years and it worked really well. And I just recently had, maybe more than four years, I just recently had to replace it because it was like butchering all my pencils. Um, but it lasted a really long time and got a really good like sharpened tip for a really long time before I had to replace it. So if you're looking for a cheap but good sharpener, there you go. Erasers. Um, I don't have a particular brand that I go for. I think this is an Artist Loft needed eraser, which is the Michael Store brand, really cheap. Works really well. I don't use it for anything much beyond like lightening a sketch before moving on to the next step. I find that it just doesn't like, I know people like to use it as an actual eraser to avoid having pencil sh or eraser shavings, but that doesn't bother me. And also it just doesn't, I mean, maybe a better quality needed eraser would like actually erase better, but like, I, I don't know. I use this eraser. Um, I don't, so here's, here's the thing, is I have no clue what kind of eraser this is. I don't remember the last time I really bought an eraser. Um, I just have them. And it just never gets smaller. And the one time I needed a new eraser, I just, like, it was, it was this one is the new one. I just had it. Like, I don't know where it came from. I don't know what kind of erasers these are. The only thing I can say is it's kind of like one of the like school pink school erasers, but it's tan and I think they do come in art stores, I think. Um, but one thing I do know is at art stores, they do sell like those like cube yellowy tan ones. Don't buy those. I hate those. They're crumbly and they don't work. Disgusting. 
Okay, next up is pens. I don't use these quite as often anymore because this just isn't really what my style is lately, but I definitely did use them a lot before and I do still enjoy them and would recommend them. So we're gonna talk about them. Uh, I guess the only exception being like something that I still use are these blue pilot, easy touch, fine ballpoint pens. I really like these. I like had a loose one with no cap, so I couldn't see what the brand was um, for a really long time. And I was desperately trying to find the pens and I stumbled across them somewhere. Um, and I bought a whole pack because I really, really, really like these. They're not for art, obviously. And you can tell like when I draw with them, sometimes like the ink will clump. Um, but I really like the way they look and I love the way they feel. They're great for sketching and doodling. Like with a light touch, like these look so good. They look so good. I've done like full like anatomy sketches with them and I think they're, they look really pretty. So if you just want like a cheap pen, if you're like one of those people who just like likes nice pens to draw with, get this. I love these pens. Then we have the classic white gel pen. I've tried, I think Uniball, and then there's another brand that is like, those are like the two really popular ones. And honestly, those have never worked for me. Like they always like die right away or they won't like, like roll properly. Like they don't work for, oh, jelly rolls. They just don't work for me. They haven't ever. And I have like kept buying them thinking like maybe I'm buying duds. They don't work. Um, and then Art and Fly, when I worked with them a while ago, they sent me some of theirs and they work so well. Like they work so well. And I'm so grateful that they sent me like, I have like four or five or something. And I will probably keep buying these when I use all of them because they genuinely work really well. So if you're looking for white gel pens, the ones that you have like don't work, you've tried like the popular brands, try Art and Fly. I think they genuinely like, like these work so well. Like, wow, it showed up on my hand. Like that's good. Like they're, they're good. And they're like pretty opaque too, which is nice. Then we have the classic Microns. Um, I haven't really found anything that beats Microns. I also haven't really tried to find anything that beats Microns, but they're kind of expensive. Um, but like they're actually black. Like s other pens that I've tried, the ink isn't actually black. So it just depends on whether or not you care about that. But Microns are the classic, like if you do art, you probably have at least one Micron or you know someone who uses Micron pens. Um, and I, I definitely use them. My go-to sizes, 03, 08, 01, and 05. Those are the ones that I reach for most often. I have like a one, two, three, but the three is like so, like it doesn't, the nib isn't quite right. One is like, I may as well just use a permanent marker. Two I kind of use, but like for what? Like, I don't know. Um, I'll just use like a black marker if I need something like that. Anyways, um, I really like these. And then last for pens are Pigma brush pens, which again are something that I used to use more often. And every once in a while, I'll use these now for like cool line art, um, but they look really cool. Every time I use them, I'm always like, wow, I should use these more often. And then I don't, um, but they come in medium, fine and bold. And they're just like, I don't even know how to, they're just like brush pens kind of. I don't know if you can, I don't know if that's, they're nice. They're really nice. The ink is really nice. Um, I don't think they're really that expensive, but they're also not nest. These are like a luxury kind of thing. Like if you're a cheap person who doesn't like to spend money like me, like these are like luxuries. Like these are treats for when I want to get some kind of spicy, some new, like this is the kind of thing that I would get. Really quick, we're going to talk about some like just filler stuff. And this is stuff that I put in my sketchbooks that I think not everyone really thinks about um, having on hand. And that is like post-its and washi tape. I use washi tape sometimes, like if marker will bleed through, I'll literally cover a whole, the other side in washi tape and use it as a background and stick stuff on top. Um, it also is just nice for decoration. And then post-its, if I mess something up, like in pen, I'll just put a post-it on top and it adds a pop of color and you can keep drawing. Um, I really like using that stuff. Um, I don't use it quite so much anymore because I use my sketchbooks a little bit differently now, but I used to use them a lot and people used to really like the way it looked. So if you're looking for something a little different, spice things up a little bit in your sketchbook, buy this stuff. Also like highlighters, just general office supplies. Like you don't need art supplies to have like a fun time in your sketchbook. Experiment a little bit. Next up is an obvious one that is Copics. Um, I have here like the, if you're looking for like base like what markers would you what i suggest like off the bat grays 
and then primaries. I have off primaries, kind of. I have RV25. I thought I said dog water, but it's dog rose flower. Y19 and BO4. These are some nice off primaries. And then a grayscale. I've never done, well, I've like tested it and it worked pretty well. Um, but I've seen other artists recommend that if you do have a very limited selection of markers, get grayscale and then you can do a whole sketch in grayscale and then get like a few colors and you can put that on top and then you have a bunch of different values without needing a bunch of different markers. Um, so these would be my suggestions if you're looking for just like a few markers to start off with. I would suggest grays, primaries, and build up from there. Um, but yeah, I really like Copics. Obviously, I don't know who doesn't. Um, Copics, however, are really expensive and not accessible and attainable for everyone. I wish I had a cheap option to provide. Um, my next suggestion would be Touch Twin Shin, Shin Han markers. Those I find are really, really hard to find in America. Um, I happened to come across them when I was in college at a really small local art store. They happened to carry them and that store closed down and I have not been able to find them since. Like I can't find them. I contacted them asking like, how do I buy them? And they were really unhelpful. Like they, like online it's really expensive. And also when I look for it online, I haven't in a while because now I use Copics, but before I only found like sketchy stores. So I don't, it's kind of random whether or not you can get them as far as I'm aware. So I can't really suggest them to you. My old suggest, like before my suggestion for cheap markers was Arteza Everblend markers. However, um, I know, I think they've, I don't think they like me anymore. We used to work a lot, but they've been, literally ghosting me um, because I sent them an angry email when they did something kind of bad. They fixed the situation, but ever since they won't talk to me. So I don't know exactly what the deal is, but they used to have pretty decent um, bullet tip alcohol markers for pretty cheap. Um, however, now they've taken them off the market that I, that I, you know, they don't offer them anymore. And they redid them for almost triple the price. Last time I did the math, I could have done it wrong, but it was around triple the price. Um, and I cannot tell what they changed. I literally cannot, I haven't gotten to try them. So maybe they are way better, but I don't, they didn't change the bullet to a brush tip. So until I try those, frankly, I mean, they're not cheap anymore. So I can't suggest them as a cheap option, but I no longer have a cheap suggestion for markers, um, which is a bummer. I've tried a few other brands and none have really like stuck out to me as something that I would suggest people buy. But yeah, it's, it's a bummer. I wish Arteza would have not done that. But. And to round off like the sketchbook stuff, um, we're gonna talk about Prismacolor pencils. Prismacolor colored pencils. Um, I have this 72 set, which honestly, like I don't, hmm, there are a lot of colors in here that I never use because they don't really do just colored pencil pieces. I'm sure if you do, then you could totally use the whole set. Um, but I don't know what the color selection is in the smaller sets, but I can totally see buying a smaller set and then like kind of building up your collection one by one, but probably just getting this bigger set is cheaper. I don't know. Um, but I definitely like Prismacolor. I haven't tried that many other colored pencils because I really like these and so I've felt no need to. I, I'm gonna tell you the colors that I use most often because they're all these little nubs right here. I use 933, which is like this blue. I use that as like a black pretty often. I use 931, 1002. Oh, I use this one all the time. 943, 927, 944, 1023. Just basically browns and like neutrals. I use those a lot, but um, just in general, Prismacolor pencils are really good. If you're looking for colored pencils, I would suggest these. Um, I don't have a cheaper option to suggest because I've always used these, but in my opinion, they're not that expensive considering what you're getting, how long they'll last you, like how good they are. I think these are definitely worth it. All right, now we're gonna move on to the paint stuff. I have three brushes here just to show you the three brands that I'm using. I don't paint that often. I'm doing it more now, but for a really long time, I just didn't really ever paint. So good paint brushes were not a priority for me. I only recently started like 
buying, like I have had the same brushes for so long. I just recently bought new ones, which is this one that I really like um, and kind of these, but this is Simply Simmons. This brand, I have a bunch of these that I was probably given as some sort of like school secret Santa gift back in like middle school or high school, probably middle school. Um, but I actually reach for a couple of these brushes like all the time, they do the job. So probably cheap. I don't even know if, I don't know where these are from, but I use them. And then I have the Master's Touch, which is Hobby Lobby store brand. We hate Hobby Lobby, but they do have nice coupons. Um, honestly, I actually don't hate Hobby Lobby. I know they're homophobic, but like, I love going and feeling like I could be hate crimed at any moment. I'm not gonna lie, it's so fun there. Anyways, um, they have these really nice, like fine, fine, tiny brushes that actually work really well. I was really surprised to see how well they work because I've bought like, more expensive, like nice, tiny brushes that don't work. Um, so these actually work pretty well. Like they, they won't stay fine. These, they work, so that's good. And then I just recently bought these from Michaels. This is Royal and Langnickel. Um, they were really cheap. I don't know if this is a good, I don't know anything about brushes or like paint really. I don't know if this is good or not, but it was really cheap and I bought two of them and they're also working really well. So those are my go-to brushes not these sizes but these brands when it comes to sizes if you want to know i usually use one big flat one like medium flat one one small flat one medium round and one small round and then one tiny fine so there you go okay for paper i use this paper for literally everything i use it for marker colored pencil gouache watercolor i don't use it for acrylic but only because if i'm using acrylic like i'm gonna do it on like some sort of board um, I don't do acrylic on paper, but like this works for everything. It is the Canson watercolor paper. This is nine by 12 inches, 140 pounds, cold press. I love this paper. If I'm doing anything like out of my sketchbook, I am doing it on this paper. It works so well. It like, I just love it. And it's pretty expensive for only 30 sheets. I think it's, I don't know how much it is off the top of my head. It should be on the screen, but it works like really well. And it honestly lasts a really long time. I don't work super big. I usually cut it down um, and it lasts a really long time. So if you're looking for paper recommendations, I really like this paper, like a lot. When I do use acrylic, um, I personally hate canvas. I, I just recently like, two days ago, I tried painting acrylic on a canvas board and I threw it away because I was getting so, like it's, I hate working on canvas. I don't like canvas. I don't like the texture. There's something about it that drives me crazy. I don't like it. I have a hard time using it. Um, but I found that I do really love working on gesso board. This is Master's Touch. So again, Hobby Lobby store brand. So it's pretty cheap being a store brand. Um, I don't know if there's better quality, but this one works fine for me. It comes in like smooth and textured. I like both. The texture is like kind of grainy, like sandpapery. Um, and I think paint looks really beautiful on both of these. It's really fun to like, it's a really nice texture to work on. If you don't like canvas as well, then I think you might really like this. It's, it's so satisfying. I can't explain it. If you've seen, whoa. If you've seen my Willow painting that I did, um, that was on this gesso board. I just, I really like the way it looks. I like the way it looks. Okay, now on to actual paints. I don't have these two things with me, but for watercolor, I really like the Winsor & Newton watercolor like travel palette. It comes with a nice little brush and it just, it works really well. Um, I love the color selection. They're stunning. They're such beautiful colors. It reminds me of like Norman Rockwell. Um, I love the reds. Just literally, I love this color palette. Um, and I really like the size and it just, it works really well. And I've had it for a while and it's lasted me per, like a pretty long time. I don't use watercolor that often, but it's like, I'm surprised about how well these have lasted. Um, I really like them. The only downside is it doesn't come with a black, which I don't use black generally, but with watercolor, I tend to like having one because it's harder to make those colors like darker and opaque without black. Um, so that is the one downside, but I do really like it otherwise. My cheap go-to and another, it's just a general go-to. It's like the first real watercolor palette I have is the Prongs Oval Palette. This is $8. It's at Michael's. 
It's really cheap, really convenient, and it actually looks and works really well, and it has black and white. One thing I recently noticed, obviously it has white, <laughs> but one thing I recently noticed is that the white almost works like a gouache, like a cheaper gouache, which is really, really, really nice. Um, that's one of the draws for gouaches that you can layer light on dark, and with watercolor you can't do that, but this white lets you sometimes, and it's really nice especially if you are used to working in gouache like me and you kind of don't know how to work in watercolor. Um, but so I definitely recommend, if you're looking for a cheap watercolor palette, I definitely recommend this one. It looks really nice. The reason I bought this one years and years ago is I think you pronounce it Tomatka, who is like big on Instagram. They use that palette and I was like, ah, oh, perfect, I'll use it too. And it actually works really well. They can do amazing things with it. I don't know if they still use it, but at the time, their art was amazing just using that really cheap watercolor palette so it works really well next up is acrylic um again i don't know a lot about paint so i don't know how good these are considered um i think so in michael's they like do level one two and three i think these are at level two i think maybe level no yeah these are probably like level two they work really well for me um, i'm going to show you the colors that i most often use um, I generally use, I think these are all, all except for this one and this one. These are all Grumbacher. Um, I really like that brand. It's what I've been using since I've like started using like art supplies in like elementary school, middle school. Um, and then I have one Master's Touch. This is raw sienna, just some like brownie yellowy. I use this all the time. This is Liquitex and this is magenta. And I use this, if you've seen any of my speed paint type things, I always have like a pink base now with gouache and also now with acrylic. So this is just for like that underpainting, a really thin underpainting. So for the colors that I most often use, I use Process Magenta, which is just a red, um, Cadmium Orange Hue. I don't always use orange, but if a painting has a lot of orange hues in it, I'll put it on my palette, because obviously you can make your own orange. Cadmium Yellow, Cerulean Blue, Process Cyan, and Dioxazine Purple. Obviously there's no black here, and that's because I try to avoid using black as often as possible. So to make my own black, I usually mix a combination of, depending on what hue I want it to go towards, my red, my purple, and my dark blue, and that makes a really nice black. Um, but yeah, those are usually the colors that I don't, I never put anything besides these colors on my palette. So for my, like, nicer gouache these were really expensive i think these were 30 ish dollars this is the holbein's artist gouache it comes with 12 colors um, and when i say expensive i mean the tubes are this big they're tiny um i've tried looking into like buying i'm and not i do not need to buy it yet like again but i've looked into like specific tubes and i don't think they sell this anymore which is a shame because i love these paints i think the color selection is beautiful it's like mainly just primaries with one like not just primaries it's like the like the basic rainbow color but like one offset as well so there's like two reds two yellows two greens blue blue purple purple like that um but the colors are just so beautiful and i really like them and they look really nice and, uh, um i use like a lot of white so i've had to buy like a two different tubes of white but they don't, they don't sell, as far as I can tell, um, straight like gouache like this anymore, but they have a lot of acrylic gouache, which I also have. Um, it came as primary and then black and white, which was also probably around $30, but I haven't used it yet, so I can't really talk about it um, because I'm waiting till I finish this to move on to a different kind of gouache. Um, but like I said, this is pretty expensive. I don't even know if this is available anymore, but Holbein in general is a great like brand. Um, so if you are looking for any sort of gouache, a nicer gouache, Holbein is the way to go in my opinion. As for a cheaper option, you've probably heard me talk about this before, but the Hemi Jelly Gouache is by far, I mean, not that I've tried a lot of gouache, especially cheaper gouache, but this by far is my favorite. Um, a while ago, I tried like gouache, like I think it was like an artist loft like box, probably ten dollars did not even work like gouache it was like bad watercolor like some cheap gouache does not even work like gouache like it just is garbage this for the price 
the quality and the amount that you get is insane. It's genuinely good quality. Like I go for this. I mean, I save this for commissions and I use this for everything else. And it is so good. Like I would not even, like I would use this for commissions if I didn't have a better option because it's just, it looks so good. Like it's so good. The color selection is so good. The amount that you get is so good. The quality, like I can't, I cannot express to you enough how much I like the Himi gouache. Um, and I think it's definitely affordable. It comes in smaller sizes for even cheaper. Yeah, like I, if you're looking for gouache, I suggest Hemi gouache, even probably before I would suggest Holbein, especially if you're new to gouache, this is a great place to start, um, great place to be in general. So I use this. If you see me using gouache, unless it's commission, it's probably like with this stuff, cause it's, it's so good. I could sing its praises all day, it's so good. Also, really quick, I should just say that I use Photoshop um, for digital art. You guys don't really see me do digital that much, but when I do, I use Photoshop. If you're looking for a cheaper option, I used to use Medibang, which I'm pretty sure is free. It was free years ago. I'm sure it still is. And it worked really, really well. I actually, there are some things about Medibang that I remember that I prefer over Photoshop, like the warp tool, like the transformation tool um, works way better. In, Metabang than it does in Photoshop, in my opinion. So uh, that's for digital as well. Um, I have a Surface Pro 4 laptop. That's like the tablet that I use. It has a detachable keypad and it comes with a pen. So that's what I use for drawing digitally as well as the program. Um, I don't know if I would suggest this laptop. It's just the only laptop I've ever had. There you go, okay. Okay, so that is all the art supplies that I have to show you. Um, I hope it was helpful in some way. I know you guys ask about that sometimes. Um, if I didn't show anything, it's probably because I don't use it or I'm not knowledgeable enough about it to suggest it. But if you do have any questions about anything um, in this video, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to answer. I will have all the information about these products in the description of this video. I will try my best to not use Amazon links. And if there's anything missing, it's probably because it's just not available anymore. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed watching, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff, because that really helps me out. Um, but I'm just so glad that you were here today with me. Um, you can also check me out on Instagram and Twitter. You can commission me over there. You can also check me out on Patreon if you want to be part of the gay family. We have a great time over there. Uh, but just, yeah, th thank you for watching. Go water your plants if you don't have any. Consider getting some. They're great air purifiers. Pothos is a really good indoor plant that doesn't need a lot of light and they thrive. I'm propagating a bunch right now. Go on a walk, go pet your dog or your cat or whatever kind of pet you have. And if you don't have one, hug a stuffed animal. Make your bed, clean your sheets, and go do some art. Bye guys.